Okay, welcome back to the experimental portion of experiment number nine. Uniform circular motion. May the Lord be with you. All right. Anyway, here's the gear we're going to be using. And uh, it's all, you know, through the computer and capstone. Um, this setup right here, uh, ring stand. All right. And this device here is the... It's got a motor in there, and it's got this beam right here. And you put a mass on there, and it has a, a, a wire that goes to the mass. And as you spin it, it'll want to go in a straight line path, and it'll, get, it'll look like it's trying to you know, fly off. But it needs to pull, it needs to get enough force to keep it moving in a circular path. So it pulls on the force sensor and we can get the force. We also need to measure things like period. So how long does it take to go around once? Or velocity. How fast is it moving? Uh, or actually speed. What's the speed of the object as it's going around? All right. Then the other measurement is radius and you can just measure that right on the side of this beam right here. But anyway, this guy here, that's movable. This one here is just a counterbalance because if you don't balance the beam and you got it spinning really fast, uh, it could start wobbling like crazy. Now, you don't want to go above um, 12 volts. I think it's 12 volts, all right? Your teacher will tell you uh, when you're in class if it's not 12 volts. But uh, it might be a little bit less, maybe 10 volts. All right. Now, close up right here. If you look right here, you can see there's a photo gate. Very, very hard to see. But up close, you can see there it is right there. And it is screwed in place. And this post right here, it's basically, it's basically a smart pulley with one spoke. Okay, so the spoke goes around 360 degrees and blocks the beam. And then one period later, by the way, period is the time it takes to go around once. So period later, it comes back and blocks the beam again. So you can very easily keep track of period. Now, if you know how fast it, you want it, uh, if you want to know how fast it's moving, you could do this. You could go, all right, well, speed is equal to uh, the distance over the time. Well, when you go once around a circle, you go the circumference. So that's 2 pi r all over big T. So big T is the period of motion. It's the time to go around once. All right. So you can see the related uh, like that, like an inverse relationship. So if you have a fixed radius, then all you have to do is change the period and you'll be changing the speed. And you can tell the smart pulley through capstone to give you the speed directly. So one, if you fix the, fix the radius and you want to change the speed, then basically all you're doing is changing um, the period. You know, shorter amount of time to go around the same circle, you're going faster. All right, so it makes good sense. All right, so let me go and click, click one more. And this is the close-up. So here, let me go back for one second. So you see this part of it right here, okay? Let me show you what that looks like. There's a swivel. And then the wire attaches down here to like a little turnbuckle. It's a puny little turnbuckle there. That clips on here, and then it clips on the end of the wire, or a piece of string. All right, we don't have as many wires as we should, so we just use string. We put a loop on the end, goes down here, goes under here, and then attaches to the bottom of the mass. All right, so let's go over here, and you can see uh, what I'm talking about. So here's the force sensor right here. You can see the little turnbuckle right there. And I have the wire, so you can see it's uh, got a little loop in there. So it sits there, goes down here, and then the side that the move you get the right radius. And if you had actually had it going the other way, it would give you the wrong radius value. But this is set for the right radius. So when there's no force acting on this, you can measure what the radius is. You just pull it so it's nice and taut, and that's basically where it's going to go when it's spinning around. Now you put this mass over here, this is the fixed mass, and you can move that to adjust 
for a change in radius. Now the, you're gonna do two experiments. The first one, you're not gonna change the radius. So you pick whatever radius you want and then go with it. Okay, it won't change for the whole experiment. Now, this whole thing needs to be mass. You need to get a good value for the mass. See how the mass slides right here? There's a very nice Teflon washer that makes it super slippery. All right. So anyway, you gotta take that apart and then use the digital balance right here. So it's a milligram digital balance. Uh, it's got like a little lid on top, take the lid off, and then turn that on, turn that on and you can measure to one thousandth of a gram. Okay, so you wanna get that thing measured to a thousandth of a gram. Now I've got the photo gate plugged into jack number one, this RCA uh, cable to the photo gate. Uh, power, so there's a motor right here, so the power right here is plugged right into the power input number one uh, up here on top. Okay, this will give you up to 15 volts. But remember, don't go any higher than 12 volts. I don't even think they want you to go 12. So when you go to 12, go fast, get it done fast. All right, and the force sensor is right here. Now remember, zero the force sensor when there's no force pulling on it. And the tear button is right over here. Also, I need to tell you about the force sensor. Never mess with them because they're very expensive. There's a, they're about 150 bucks a piece. And they only allow up to 50 newtons of force, which is not much force at all. So when you, when you use this thing, always handle the force sensors with great care. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set up the photo gate. So you go over here and you click on the RCA jack port right here and, it, and pick photo gate with pulley, all right? Photo gate with pulley, and then you get the timer pulley set, uh, set up right here. And you don't want the block. So let's say we wanted um, the speed. Well, we could click on speed. We definitely don't want position. And we don't want the acceleration, okay? We don't want the angle, and we don't want the uh, angular speed. But here's block to block. This is the period right here. Block to block times. We do want that. Okay, and then down here we don't want angular acceleration. So linear speed or the period, the time it takes to go all the way around. We could get both those numbers. Now here is the, it says spoke arc length. Now if you put the radius in here, okay, right in here, if you put the radius, then now notice it's in meters. So if you put the radius, and by the way, the spoke angle is 360 degrees, so you have to change it to uh, 360 degrees, and then you're all set. But if you put the radius in there, then you will get the, the linear speed. It'll tell you the speed, which is great. So if you do your first experiment on speed, then be sure and put your radius in here, and it'll just give you the speed. If you do the first experiment on period, then you don't need to know the linear speed. You can go with block to block time. That'll give you the, the period right there. All right, so let's go ahead and see uh, what we're gonna set up over here. So I'm gonna close that up, that's all set. And my four sensors all, all set right here. And uh, it might be uh, negative right now. Let me change the sign and we'll go with that. Okay, we wanna, I like positive numbers rather than ne negative numbers. So that's that. Now this is what's called digits. So I'm gonna ask for two of them. Okay, actually I'm gonna ask for three of them. So you can see the force, and so you go right up here and put force, okay? And you want more SIGIs. There's a SIGI button right up here, bink, bink, okay? And then down here, let's go for a period, block to block. Where's block to block? Block count, I guess that's it. They changed the name in here, huh? Okay, so uh, right there, um, and we can change the SIGIs again, they're right there. All right, good, and then over here we'll go with speed. Oh, I didn't put a value in for the speed, but that doesn't matter. There was a number in there already. So let's just say we put the right number in there. And we'll go with one more. Bing! Okay, that's good. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, show you how to get the voltage. Oh, come on back, Tom. So you go down here to signal generator, all right, and this opens. We're using output one. Notice it says sine wave here. We don't want a sine wave, we want DC. Okay, the voltage limit, we're gonna put 12 here, so we won't accidentally go above, above 12. 
All right, and we put another digit, we get like three ciggies, but that doesn't matter. All right, so let's start with a couple of volts. All right, we'll start with four volts right there. Okay, so you can change the voltage, and when you do that, it's gonna change how fast it spins. All right, so everything, so now you turn it on right here, and you can see it's spinning. But you know what, we forgot to tear the force sensor. So let me stop it, all right? And we'll move this in so there's no force on the force sensor. And we'll go ahead and uh, tear it out. So right here is the tear button, zero, and we're all set to go. Okay, so let's try that one more time. We'll turn it on and do that. Okay, so there you go right there. So you can see it's given me the speed, uh, 0 0.054 centimeters per second. I can ask for another digit. So there we go right there. But actually, it's pretty consistent. Look, very little fluctuation. This is the, the force. Now you can ask for an average force. So you just go right here, because you can see it's jumping around a lot. So the mean, so it's actually given us, uh, given us the mean. All right, and uh, let's see, the force sensor's 20. Let's set it for 50 hertz uh, sampling rate. Oh, you can't do it unless you turn it off. So right now it's at 20. And then 143, um, that is the block count. That must be just counting how many times it goes around. So let me just stop that for one second. And go in here and go, where does it say block to block? I don't, it looks like they may have changed it. That is so weird. All right. So we'll just skip that one right now. We could do angular speed. And here, let's start it again. So this is how many radians it's spinning around per second, 2.38 radians per second. Pretty consistent. All right, so you're all done with that. It turns out you can actually just go to your next measurement, open this thing up, and just up the voltage. All right, there's, there's uh, eight volts. Now you can also set it for like eight and a half volts if you want. But remember, always take small, medium, and large measurements. Now if you go down to like one volt, You can see it spins very poorly. Uh, so it's hard to make that measurement. So you can't really do a one volt, but you can, might get away with a two volt. Two volt looks okay. Definitely a three volt. And uh, let's go up to like, that's 10 volts right there. And look at how consistent those numbers are, the speed and the angular frequency. This guy's jumping around a lot. I wish he'd give us a better average. I don't know what he's averaging right now, uh, but you can put him in a data table and try that. Let's try a data table. So let's do one more thing. And we'll put force right here. And ask for average. Okay, so right down there, you see mean? So let's go ahead and push record. And now that will give you a really nice average. Look at that, 8.6, 8.6, 8.6. So that'd be a better way to go uh, like that. So and you can add more ciggies right there, 8.61. So just keep that in mind. Uh, that's a better way to measure the force is just to go in a data table, get a huge data set, and then uh, take the average. All right, now for the second experiment, let me stop this. Now for the second experiment, you're gonna change the radius. So that means, so like if you want this guy to be in tighter, closer radius, then you have to raise this thing up. So this is, so you do this experiment second, because it's a tough measurement to do. Now remember, you need to take, well in this case, just take eight measurements. Okay, and this wire's gotta go around the spool, so I accidentally, uh, didn't get that set up correctly. Okay, good. And then you can lift this up to change the radius. Okay, so like, and by the way, you don't want to be all the way where you're pulling it right up against the slot, because then you don't know what radius you're really at. You've you're got force, even though you don't have a smaller radius. Okay, make sure. But anyway,
anyway, that's a different radius. But now you've got to keep speed constant. And a good value is like 2 meters per second. So you just adjust the voltage until the speed is 2 to the force. How's that sound? Okay, but notice everything is the same. Just a little bit more challenging, a lot more error. You'll see the difference between the two. One's really precise and the other one's not so precise. Okay, so that's it. That was lab number nine, uniform circular motion. And peace be with you. Bye.